Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it, and welcome back to Emerald Gardens. Long time no see. I do want to apologize for how long it's been since I've had an episode of Emerald Gardens. Uh, it wasn't my intention to be gone as long as I was. Uh, it's just this, this one of the, for whatever reason, I've been having one heck of a time trying to get back into it since uh, winter break, since basically Christmas. It's been two months now, and I just have not been able to keep up with regular uploads. And I even haven't really been all into playing this game up until the last couple weeks. I've talked about it a lot on the last episode of uh, Brocoaster Season Zoo. We talked about it a lot in the bro sode leading up to that most recent episode, which is episode 5. So if you want to know my feelings on that, uh, you can just go ahead and watch that. I don't want to spend too much extra time talking about it today. But you'll notice that we're in real time today. Uh, we're going to try a different thing here. We're going to try a slightly different concept of a video. Uh, I've been working quite a bit for a week, and I'd like to show you a bit of the process. It's going to be very similar to how Ruble Trillions does his videos and how my bro... N7, Mike Sheets, does his videos. Uh, we're just going to be taking some jumps, uh, hopefully some jumps in time. <laughs> and hopefully by the end we'll have something done. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But we're over in the buffalo area, if you couldn't tell from the buffalo that was hanging out there. And I started dressing up uh, this area, making it want, I wanted to make it look a little more um, man-made. Uh, from a recent trip at the zoo, I noticed just about all of the water areas where the animals can access are concretized. They're concrete bottoms, fake borders, and usually drains. So one of the things I've been doing, and I'm going to point it out a bunch today, are drains. This is the first drain that you'll see today. And I'm thinking of bunching these up into a, uh, a downloadable thing for the workshop, just a collection of the drains I've been making for this project. Uh, so maybe that'll be coming in the next few weeks, maybe a little bit longer. I don't know. It depends how many I can make to warrant a little, quote, pack. But you'll see I have some plaster down here being used as a concrete bottom. And I think it's the coarse sand texture that really helps make it look artificial with some rocks. And the rocks do look very samey. And that's intentional uh, to make it look artificial. And I haven't finished, but it was a kind of like a trial, uh, and you'll see it, uh, it just a, just a trial. Whoop! Get out of the tree. And I still need to do, I do plan to do the entire little, quote, river. I also added some water effects, and we'll dress this up uh, some other time. But you can see some adding some motion to the water. That was another thing I noticed. A lot of the water at the zoos was, was moving, and I'm assuming that's to keep it clean-ish. Um, agitated, aerated, so that moss and gross stuff doesn't grow. Especially if it's being used as drinking water. They can't treat it. Uh, you don't want to make the animals sick. So, But this isn't the focus of the episode. What we're going to be doing is we're going to fly over here. And you can see, uh, if you remember from the last episode where Ruby took over the park, and all that is, 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 as I zoom out, way over yonder way over there. We're not going to touch anything over there today. I have done a little bit of work uh, kind of moving some of the fences around, but um, I'll wait until it's in a better place to show it to you. I've cleared out. She had <laughs> a really janky wolf exhibit and some enclosures to kind of make things look a little... Uh, or so to be able to use some board uh, billboards and stuff for her area. I've cleaned all that out, and we are going to be using this area here today for our wolves. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to be doing is trying to pay extra careful attention to realism. We're really going to try and nail the look of the enclosure, especially the interior or the night house. And uh, that's actually what I'm going to be starting with is the, uh, the, the kennels, or as apparently they like to say in the biz, the bedrooms. Um, I did have a, a zookeeper, someone who actually works in a zoo, reach out to me and give me lots of great feedback. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can come up with here. All right, so here we are. Uh, been working for a bit and have ourselves the first iteration <laughs> of the interior. This is based off of images I found off of Zulex.org. Um, and a little peek behind the curtain, what I've done is every time I reached a point where I wanted to stop and talk, I saved the park and I just gave it a different file name and then I'm, I'm going back through and reloading all the files. So this is sort of, uh, you're gonna see 
quite a bit of difference here. So this is step one, and uh, the individual bedrooms here. And for this iteration, it was I thought that they could come in here and go into their pens. And uh, they're supposed to be uh, mechanized like switch doors that would be remote controlled. And so that's what's going on up here. You could see that they, the doors would slide. And uh, I didn't do it yet, but what you could do if I bring up the interface is I'm gonna do the barriers and uh, you can use mesh or whatever. And what I was doing that seemed to work really well is um, if I just do this and bring it up higher, uh, I can go ahead and using the plus key, uh, create individual pens and it whoops it looks I think it looks really good I really like the way it it it, it, it feels very convincing um, everything all the pictures I found of backstages of zoos are, are pretty uh, uh, less than ideal I suppose like it doesn't bother me because you need something very utilitarian it's something we've mentioned a lot in planet Z in in season zoo and I haven't really done it yet. Uh, but backstages are very all concrete, all gray, nothing fancy. Each animal has its own individual pen, or at least wolves um, have their own little kennels. And so that's kind of what we got going on here. And this was supposed to be a indoor area for all of them to go. Like if there's inclement weather, they can all just go hang out in here together rather than separate. Um, you can see here's a second drain. Uh, this one's a little more rusty looking. And I think there's another one. Yeah, and then there's more drains back here. These are long and narrow. These were actually in the most recent episode of Bro Coaster. So, but uh, a mix of in-game wall pieces here. We got some some in-game wall pieces, and then we've got some of the painted brick columns you can see. And that's how we're doing this. And one of the things is uh, drains and hoses tend to be the thing. So each kennel, a uh, bedroom, sorry, each bedroom has its own hose and they could go in there and they could spray it down. Also, uh, in this building, we will have a, sta a keeper hut and a staff room, and I just put these here for now. And uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep pressing forward. One of the things that I know I'm gonna be struggling with is this is built on a hill, and uh, if we look at about where we're at, the, uh, the, the building is up the hill quite a bit like the backstage area is uphill which is gonna make it pretty hard to hide so let's jump ahead and uh, let's see what else we can let's let, let's take a look at it <laughs> after I, uh, I'm able to put some some more time into it all right welcome welcome back to this cut <laughs> and uh, or I guess welcome to this cut and some some larger changes I think um, we've started kind of etching out where we think the habitat's gonna be or where I think the habitat's gonna be and one of the things I did uh, <laughs> in an effort to be true to realism I made this and uh, if you want to know what this is I call I tweeted about this this is my motomatic and uh, it's my template to make sure that everything is up to AZA standards in this exhibit. I did read the AZA PDF all about canids, uh, large, large dog-like critters. So a variety of wolves and also African dogs. So all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in this video works for any of the canids in Planet Zoo. They are uh, maned, maned foxes, those South American foxes, are the only ones that have slightly different um, details, but spotted ha uh, painted dogs and arctic wolves and timber wolves, which is, I never did say this is going to be timber wolves, um, all use this same thing. And uh, I think it was four and a half meters high, and then you need to have four meter distance, and then it needs to be at a 30 degree angle, uh, the moat, the, the bottom of the, the moat, so that the animal can climb out of it if it wants to. And the, the distance here is so that if the animal were to, if this is the f edge of the exhibit, if it were to jump, like no matter how good of a jump it got, it couldn't climb that fence. And all this is to create a natural border around the, the habitat rather than big fences and stuff. We're gonna use this this moat, and it won't be a sheer cliff. Like this is all work in progress. You can see here that I'm working. Um, if I control Z, that you can see I'm working on smoothing it out here, trying to get it close. 
super tedious, but but totally uh, totally worth it. I think I think it's going to be totally worth it in the end. Uh, again, playing with the terrain here and realizing the difficulty that I've given myself with this building on the side of a hill, not to mention backing up to the goat habitat. This is the backside of the goats. Kind of a pain in the butt to have <laughs> this massive exhibit here because this is supposed to be fake rock work anyway so it's kind of massive so you'll see i have this giant wall here kind of working as my rough 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 border and this is where we get to uh honestly at this point in the build the person who actually works at the zoo hadn't really reached out to me yet um so this was just on my own going off of uh, like two pictures that i could find and then my own ideas and you're gonna see real soon how how much this changes and for the better for the better but um i did like this back area here the intention here was going to be to put like cameras and tables and stuff in here because i had this big open space but i like the way this feels like a a, a legitimate building now and uh, i'm totally inspired by the amazing work ruble trillions has been doing in tivoli zoo which is just a fantastic series. It is probably the most realistic YouTube Planet Zoo series that I have seen thus far. So, but the idea was the exhibit cage is or the exhibit door, like the in-game thing, is here. That's how they're going to access it. And we've got this airlock here. One of the things they say is you always want at least two doors between an animal and the public. So it would have one, two, three doors to get through it before we could consider it a, a an, an escape. But um, we added some HVAC stuff and some lighting because if this is climate controlled, I wanted to show that rather than just, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, take my word for it. Uh, and added a couple gates over here. But this is all going to be changing in just a second anyway because this isn't quite how it would be. And it's getting kind of large. At this point, that is a massive, massive area. I could probably use terrain and make it fit better, but then I'm, I, the other problem is then it's just too, too darn steep. So this was kind of a, a point where um, frustration, <laughs> frustration started to set in. And I'm gonna talk about that a lot more in, uh, in the next cut. So let's, let's head over and, and see the next step in, in our process. So as you can see, we, we a big jump, um, some big changes and some big uh, additions. I, I, before I went too far, I wanted to get the edge of the exhibit in using my <laughs> trademark Motomatic. And you can see here, like, I think it works pretty well. Like it's, it's a pretty steep grade, but 30 degrees, it's, it's totally within within reason, and these are all the four and a half meter um, walls, and just a little bit peeks up over the edge. Uh, I used uh, Mr. Domez's awesome archer for a scale, uh, and one of the things in the PDF, the AZA Candid PDF, is that you would use natural uh, like landscaping and berm to cover this, so you really can't see this big concrete wall. And so that's what we're gonna be going for. We're gonna, we're gonna hope that we can do that. But uh, let's take a look at the the inside, the, the night house and the pen. So you'll see the layout has completely changed. In fact, I have restarted this building. Oh, I actually have a wolf in there. Look at that. <laughs> Poor guy, I have, turned, I have turned welfare off. And he is, if the welfare was on, he would be absolutely miserable because this is not conducive. Uh, but this was just for testing purposes and for scale. Um, but whatever. Welfare is off. He's fine. And he's just a bunch of pixels um, anyway. <laughs> but you can see uh, some of the same ideas are here from the first iteration. But a lot has changed. This is a, a zookeeper. And I'm uh, not sure what zoo. But a zoo here in the United States. Uh, someone who works uh, at a zoo reached out to me and gave me some great, 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 great feedback, and even drew me some sketches to show me how it would be done, or at least how it's done in their zoo and most zoos. And one of the biggest things were doors, more doors, and more separation between keeper and animal, especially because we're dealing with a carnivore here. And like, these are all things you know, um, but you don't really think about it. Like, there is no way that 
the wolves should ever be anywhere near you so if you're a keeper. So this patch of, ty uh, of, of ground here, if I go ahead and take the uh, terrain tool and push it down, you can actually see there is some terrain there, and I can do this because I don't care. There you go. So this is actually what we're dealing with here, and uh, let me get into a better angle. Still don't have the mesh up. That's not till the very end because that's the last thing I want. I want to get the building in place before I add the fencing in. Anyway, you can see same basic idea, the doors for the keeper and a hose and a drain in every uh, in every bedroom. But now we have uh, guillotine style doors that would be controlled by ropes and pulleys. And I didn't go crazy with it because we don't have a lot of pieces for that. I just hinted at it with the rope above each door. But uh, now you can theoretically have, you can shuttle, you can shuffle animals into specific pens based on your needs. You can close them from exiting outside. So if we need to clean the pen, if we need to clean the holding area, uh, we can get the wolves to go out of it and lock it from there. Or if it's inclement, they can all be indoors and we can lock it from there. Um, so that's really, really cool. Uh, we can also, there's no way for the keeper and the wolf to be, so they would never be in the area together, obviously. So when it comes to cleaning an individual pen, you can scoot the wolf over or scoot them outside and shut the door. Um, the HVAC system has been buffed up a little bit, as have the lights, and if you're wondering what these uh, gutters are, they're just going to be supports for the roof. This is directly uh, ripped off of the image I found on Zulex.org, which if you're into Planet Zoo and you want some realistic images of habitat, Zulex.org. ZooChat is another great site you can go to and find some awesome pictures. Uh, this HVAC system, if you're curious, is from Mr. Domez. I think I mentioned him. I mentioned it in another episode. Uh, yeah, so we're setting up, trying to get things settled for the roof. We're going to use art shapes for the roof just because there's it doesn't work without it. It gets really massive. Uh, this containment pen, this outdoor holding area, is atrocious and ridiculous, and it will be changed. I also noticed I had to shift some things around here. We moved these, uh, the, the cafe, and I got a small keeper hut. I, I don't care. I don't think we need the big one. So uh, this is not its final placement. Um, again, running into the this is the biggest issue. This was the biggest issue for this build was just, look, at it's so massive. It is such an eyesore, and I don't want it to be. Um, one of the things, uh, part of the reason, uh, I'm, uh, if uh, the reason I'm not uploading regularly is because... Um, I don't know nearly as much about zoos as I thought I did, and I don't know nearly as much about zoos as I do theme parks. When it comes to Conifer Slopes, Summerdale, all that theme park stuff, I've been playing theme park games, visiting theme parks from a, a, with, the, with an eye for critical detail for way longer than I've been visiting zoos with that same um, crave of detail. And so I'm missing a lot of it. That, and, and it feels like it's way easier to find backstage information about a theme park rather than a zoo. And if I had to guess, um, it's, I would guess it's because a lot of backstages of zoos look like this, concrete and cages. And while that's what's best for zoos, I mean, no one's going to lie and say it's what's best for the animals. Uh, it's a necessary thing for the animals. I understand it. Uh, it's just a shame that it's so hard to find realistic, so hard to find good references of backstages of zoos. So that's been my biggest struggle. It's been frustrating. It's been absolutely frustrating to build something and then someone who knows way more than you do basically tells you, actually, that's all wrong and wouldn't work at all. It's like, well, damn it, because now I have to go in and redo it. Or you think of something halfway through that makes you redo everything. For example, this wall here wasn't there for the longest time. And in, I so I built it as I thought it was f accurate. And then I realized, sh shoot, we don't have any walls on the back. This needs to be completely enclosed. So when I put the walls in, because I wanted to use in-game walls, it meant I had to move every single door, every single beam, every single everything, because they were slightly out of alignment, which was, um, ridiculously frustrating so that's a lot of where it's been i cannot play this game for as long 
in one sitting as I can Planet Coaster. I can play Planet Coaster. When I get into a groove in Planet Coaster, I can play three, four hours at a go. It's really hard for me more to play more than an hour, hour and a half of this game in any in any in any go. So but I do want you to know before we, we, we take a look at what's next, before we keep working, that these are all these these bedrooms are all modeled um, per the AZA guidelines as far as square footage or square meter age. Uh, they are what's considered adequate for single animals, as well as the holding pen will be the same, will be adequate size for the number of animals we're going to have. We have three wolves. And uh, so I want you to know that I have done lots and lots of research, and uh, it looks a little tight, but these are all within within range of what the American, uh, whatever the American Zoological Association, I think is what AZA stands for. That's what it's all in, in guideline with, because it's supposed to be an American zoo. So uh, now that we have the inside done, it's time to fix the outside and start getting the habitat looking like something an animal would actually want to be in. Is the wolf asleep? There he is. He's so sleepy. Oh, look at him, he's so depressed. So depressed in his cage. Cage of sadness. That's gonna be a screenshot. Let's move on, shall we? And uh, hopefully you can see that uh, <laughs> I've gotten a little carried away. I know I just said that um, it's hard for me to play for any given amount of time. I've realized that that's all the backstage stuff that I don't know. It gets frustrating really fast. But when it comes to building the interior or the exterior of a habitat, making it look pretty, making it look nice, that's fun. That's easy to sit back and relax. This is the exact same issue that I ran into in the most recent episode of Season Zoo when I built the Lion House. Not quite understanding how the logistics of it functioned dragged me down and made me feel really... It was really unenjoyable for a while there. It's, just, it's, it's a massive hurdle to climb. And then once you do and you can go back to making it look pretty, mm, that is where it's fun. So here we are, we have started working on our exterior. You can see this massive space that they have access to, and they do have access to all of this. Uh, if I go ahead, I wanna show you, um, I click on a little wolfie, and you can see they have access to the bottom of the moat, so they can actually hide from people. They have access to everywhere. They can get in the water. Now, to be fair, the interior here that I spent all this time on is just for show. It doesn't do anything. It just looks nice, but ah, that is the way it is. That's the way it's gonna be. That's how I roll. So let's take a look at some of the highlights uh, thus far. Uh, starting with this waterfall. This is, I think, <laughs> I think this is my first official waterfall in Planet Zoo. I know I am not an official YouTuber until I built one. There. So my thought is there's some pump mechanism. I'll probably put some gutters or something in here to show the water here, the reservoir that cascades over the edge um, and splashes down. Again, one of the things I saw in a lot of habitats, a lot of moving water. Um, I have not yet covered up all the little emitters. Don't worry. Oh, there he goes. Oh, that's so cool. I haven't yet covered up the emitters, but you can see they run through the water. Uh, I've gone ahead and used that same technique that I started the video with. And I think with that in mind this time, it looks a lot more successful. Um, I built the river for the uh, for the buffalo and pronghorn without thinking of this method. So having this method in mind, one of the things I also noticed is how shallow a lot of the water is. Now wolves can swim, I think they enjoy it, but we don't have that option. So I made sure that this water was super duper shallow. Like you can't, you can barely, like yeah, there's like that much room for these guys. But uh, adding some water effects to make the water look like it's moving, putting a drain, concrete base again, sticking this log in here. I don't know. I just this is this is at this point I did a oh oh this is starting to look like something now, and I don't hate it anymore. And you can start to see if you're wondering what's going on here. I talked about it in a previous episode, and actually uh, my, this is Mike Sheets' technique. You use the track ride to get a really gentle slope for your peeps. This is where there's gonna be a path coming up here so you can get to the wolves directly from the main path. 
Uh, but you can start to see what your views are going to look like. And this will all be fixed, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll dress that up quite nice. But I, I want it to feel like you're in the woods. Um, we're going to pull a lot of the trees from in the habitat right on the other side of the habitat to make it feel like you are enveloped. And we're going to, again, decorate this entire area. But the views you get here, I really like it. Um, like th this part right here with the trees. Like that's what we're going for, excuse me, in the whole habitat. So uh, it's pretty cool. This on the hill thing is actually becoming something a little more interesting. And I'm trying to use the foliage and like where you're going to stand to look in to kind of hide some of the stuff. Like, I don't want you to not see it. You're probably going to see it. If you know where to look, you'll find some of the backstage stuff. But I'd like to hide it as much as I can. And at least, like, like I realize this <laughs> would be a terrible viewing angle. Because you're just staring at the backstage stuff. But if you're looking this way, it's a little more... With some good foliage, it's a little more hidden. And if you're over here, it's a lot more hidden. And so those are the kind of things we have to do. I was reading some stuff another person sent me who has some access to some materials. Hiding your vantage points from other guests is a big way to increase immersion. So like if I'm standing here looking at the wolves, I shouldn't be able to see the people over there looking at the wolves and vice versa. And so you got to do some tricks. You got to do some things, create block sight lines. One of the things that the wolves need multiple places where they can be with block sight lines so that if one is feeling a little more aggressive, the other one can hide or the same things that the animals need. It's turning out people are finding out that people enjoy as well when it comes to their experience uh, watching these animals in the zoo. So you can see Things are coming along quite nicely. We're using all the same foliage that the rest of the zoo has. Perhaps the idea here is this land, they saved as many trees as they could while they were building it, uh, or at least a bunch of the trees, and uh, built the habitat around what was already there. You can see our little wolf friend. Maybe I'll actually make this a covered area for them because they don't have any outdoor exterior, any exterior coverage. So maybe we'll do that, but you can see they're sleeping under the mats. I love the bracken. They may be my favorite plants. These, these fern looking things are bracken. We've gone ahead and solidified our back pen. The pen in the previous chunk was way too big. We've made ours significantly smaller, but still big enough to house three animals relatively comfortly. These would be controlled, I'm assuming, either by pulley uh, or by um, remote control. And again, the keeper can come in this way. The problem here is that, like, Finding a way to make it work in game was kind of tricky. Like, so I had to put the path. Uh, I had to put the path here, so that and the barrier here, so the, the, the people come directly into the habitat. Uh, that was the only way I could do it. You'll also notice we're missing the staff buildings. They're gonna go over here and we'll make a little building out of that. So I think our la next update is probably gonna be the final one for this episode. And we'll take a look at where the uh, habitat stands in its current, uh, in its current state. All right, so here we go. I am not gonna say this is the finished product, but I'm gonna say we're about 80, 85% of the way there. And uh, what started out as something I was really unsure about has quickly evolved into something I'm actually really, really proud of. So you can see uh, we need to add some curbs still and probably some fencing, probably some don't you dare fencing for our people. Our wolves are contained. Now I need to contain the people. But this is the idea I was talking about, using um, terrain and mini berms and foliage to hide, for the most part, that wall. It doesn't completely hide it. I don't want it to be completely hidden. I mean, I want it to still look like it's, you know, a zoo. But this is, I like this view. Like you can see right in there. And now that building just kind of blends in. We have enough trees and foliage around that you don't notice. You see it, but you don't really notice it all that much. And what I'm going to be doing is probably going to be covering this area with some more rocks, but... I want to show you. So while I'm looking here at the wolves, if I look over there, I just see some rocks. Like if I'm looking here, oh, all I can see are the people standing next to me. So some rocks and some wolves in their beautiful little habitat with their little waterfall. 
So, but uh, we got some nice little statues here. I do love the in-game, the, the statues that come with this game. I think that's one of the highlights. One of my favorite, some of my favorite scenery pieces are these statues. And then I haven't put the paths in yet, but viewing area two, it's gonna be right here. Actually, it's gonna be right here. We're gonna try and focus on that. And you can see, I put these, these trees right here are intentional. I want to obstruct your view. I want it to feel like you're walking through the woods and you just happen to stumble upon some timber wolves. We've got, and that's why we've got lots of greenery here, trees on this side of the wall, trees on that side of the wall. We're gonna put some trees behind us, but we're really gonna try and make it feel like we are in the wolves' habitat, like we're just walking on a trail. What I might actually end up doing is I might actually end up making this bark, just to really kind of sell the whole Timberwolf Trail idea. In fact, maybe that's what we'll call it, Timberwolf Trail. But what I'm trying to show you here is that, well, this is our viewing area. I can see the wolves, and yeah, I still see that backstage area a little bit, but it's not as bad as it was. But I can't see the people that are looking on the other side of the habitat. This rock wall blocks it, and that was intentional, and uh, that's one of those things I learned, one of those little um, zoo design tricks as as people learn more and more about what's best for animals and what works best for viewers and guests of the animals um, that's one of the little things so I want to show you that uh, still some more detail work like I said we're not we're not quite there yet but I think we'll get there added bunches of rocks here to kind of just make it feel a bit more grown in lots of undergrowth I really wanted this to feel um, quite quite shrubby quite quite shrubbery um i know the wolves at the brookfield zoo where i've been um, they walk in basically a little forest area uh, that's one of the things that bugs me the in-game wolves do not like grass but since i've turned well and, I, and i've met their needs even though i turned welfare off like i don't know i think i might go back in with the grass brush and and do a bit more but you could still see here like if the wolf is down, oops! If the wolf is down here, he 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 or she ain't getting, it ain't getting out, <laughs> it ain't climbing out, and it's certainly not jumping from here all the way over there. So that's pretty cool. But one of the things that I think is kind of neat, if I were the wolf, is from up here. And there he is sleeping. If I'm up here, I can see all the way across my territory. I can see all the way. I can even see over into the uh, <laughs> into the red pandas. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how this is going. Again, using foliage here to kind of dress up this area. Uh, the rock wall is, is much better. Again, making it kind of look fake is, is always kind of interesting and kind of a struggle. I put a lot of greenery up here. Um, I like it. I'm not sure how realistic it is. Might be one of those things. I like it, so it's gonna stay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really pumped with how it's, it's turning out. And if we go inside, uh, you will see that we now have um, a completed interior, complete with fencing and roof. <laughs> Ooh, roof. And I used the mesh fencing in here. Uh, that's what the picture showed. You'll also notice it might, you might notice it's been pushed back a little bit. I mentioned earlier in the episode that it's a pain in the butt when you have to make a big change like that. Well. To put the mesh in, there's a path here that the staff walks on. It's too thick, it's too wide, so I had to push everything back a little bit. So I'm still pretty sure we're in AZA compliance with these. Maybe a little bit less, um, but that's going to have to be one of those hashtag good enough things. But with the roof there, I, I really, I really like it. And I'd like to show you what the nighttime looks like. Here we are at night. And I want this to feel gross. Like, <laughs> if you look at the color of the lights, I've made the lights, uh, let's go into the building. I've made the lights this awful green color because like those fluorescent lights, they do not give off a nice, if you have fluorescent lights in your house or maybe you go to school and there's fluorescent lights in the building, they are not the nicest of lights. They're rather harsh. So the lights here, I think just give off that sterile environment that this type of building would absolutely need. So, and if we go through the door here, there's a door here. We now have, and I haven't dressed this up yet. This is still a work in progress. Uh, we have ourselves the staff room and we have ourselves the kitchen. And I could probably extend that a bit and bring it out here. But we also have our room here. We can still do our TVs. We can still do our area here where they can watch their the wolves anywhere in the habitat, which would mean we'd have to put cameras in 
we have to put some cameras in along the walls and I don't think that's anything that's too terrible but yeah um, I thought I had enough here to at least show you that um, still working and this all came together in about a week and I'm not going to say that I can do weekly uploads. I'd love to. I, it all depends what my mojo allows me to do. But, like, I, I'd like to think I could get another one of these done for everyone by next week. So, um, I do want to know what you think of this new style, of this lack of time lapse, talking through my choices and my decisions in real time while looking at it as it goes through. Like, you're seeing what I see. And... Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed doing this. This was a, a, a refreshing way to do a video. I've never done something like this. So hopefully you thought it was good too. Uh, you found it insightful and you found it enjoyable and entertaining. And so if you did find it <laughs> one or more of those things, <laughs> hit the like button down below. And if you are new, you're just finding me now, hit the subscribe button. Um, the pace has been slow, but it will probably pick up here hopefully in the near future. And with all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see all of you for the next episode of Emerald Gardens. I'll talk to you later, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>